Well, hello there. It's Sunday. Shit talking Sunday. I was supposed to be here yesterday. But as you notice, I didn't make it. I was just, I was too tired. I don't think I even woke up until like 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It was crazy. But, um, you know, I told you I thought I had been kind of fighting off something. So hopefully I got rid of it and I'm, you know, on my way to having my crap together. Let me get the chat open here. I forgot to do that. Do, 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 do. Oh. Okay, we're in business here. All right, well, what we're going to talk about today cuffing season. Now, there are some of you who are like, what the hell is that? I don't understand what that is. I don't know anything about all of that. I you know, I, I don't know the, or the origination of it. I do know I heard, I don't know, probably about six, seven years ago. And people were laughing about it and talking about how, you know, Nignogs who usually roam the streets, you can't find them. they hear here, there, and everywhere, out all night hanging in the park, drinking, you know, going on road trips on their motorcycles and their cars with the tops down, just having a good old time outdoors. Well, now it's getting ready to be snow and ice season. The temperatures are dropping. The leaves are turning brown, and that's a signal that cuffing season has begun. So what they do, cuffing, you know, like ch -ch, putting you in lockdown. And it's like, uh, you know, they start looking for somebody who they can stay with. Now, this is when it becomes interesting. I have a series of slides that I'll be showing you in a little bit. And uh, no, that's not knocking somebody out. But it's, it's, just very, it's just very interesting. So, you know, I noticed it like once I heard that phrase, I was like, oh, wow. And then, you know, there's, okay, there's cuffing season, which is, you know, they already want to, you know, they want to have somebody, right? Because you want to have somebody so you can be warm and not be lonely. Because, you know, it's not as much going on in the wintertime, like all the music festivals and art shows and wine festivals and, you know, parties and the block parties and barbecues and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of social activity when the weather's warm that's outside involving large groups of people, fairs, all this stuff, right? So, you know, your average Nick Nog, he don't need to be hooked up with nobody because it's like a candy store. There's a plethora of women everywhere they go. They like kids in the candy store picking a flower here, flower there, flower everywhere. So they're not really too concerned about being in a relationship. If you notice, during the summer, it's kind of hard to meet somebody. Okay. So now that's, that's you know, we advanced to cuffing season. Now, when you factor in another aspect of that, and that is the hobosexual. This is the man who's trying to cuff somebody so he can have a place to stay. It's not about love, commitment, marriage, none of that. None of that. And a lot of you ladies get tricked because you think he come talking and he's just like so fabulously in love with you and nigga known you for 27 minutes. And so all of a sudden, you know, he in love and he want to move in. And, you know, you sitting up there like all biting and eating it up and just loving every word of his bullshit. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Yes, honey. Useless useless but you know what a lot of them aren't even useless and let me tell you about the first guy who i met now this is a friend of mine this is the same dude that i used to hang out with who i told you ladies who listen to a lot of my shows heard the story about the dude who took me on a date and we went watching uh the white boys come in with they you know suburban vehicles with car seats in the back into east downtown west you know west oakland east oakland and pick up the little young black prostitutes, right? I, told, I know I told you about that story. I'd never seen no shit like that before. So he knew, you know, like I said, he knew how to get into my head. Now, this nigga was a trip. He was a trip. So he, um, when I first met him, he was living with this girl. And so he had lived with some other girl. Then he had like a wife. I mean, he had been married a couple of different times. And, you know, so it's just like he was just go from woman's house to woman's house to woman's house. And they would always let him live with them. And I never could understand it. But then I, you know, stepped back and I looked at him objectively because I knew he was an ain't shit nigga. So I was not looking at him like how they would look at him. He was just somebody, you know, something fun to do and entertaining. 
Um, but you know, you look at him objectively, you know, he was tall, he was nice built, very nice features, great teeth, beautiful smile, good skin. And you know, he was like, like women like that Al B. Sure kind of look, light skin with the curly hair. That was him. So I'm looking at him, I'm like, okay, I see. I see, you know, why he is so easy for him. And he had, like, the gift of gab like you would not believe. He could talk you out out your draws like that if you were not, you know, up on his games. But um, I'm telling you, hey, everybody. Honey, these ho these are, he was a homosexual. Even though he had a great job, you know, he was, actually had two jobs. He was making all kind of money. But um, he just was, he said his, his thing was he refused to pay rent. And he would always want to move in with a woman that had some kids because they would have most likely be getting like, you know, some kind of assistance either from the father or from the state, county, whatever. So it made life even easier for him because then he didn't, he really didn't have to come out of pocket for nothing. So they living in a townhouse in the suburbs on Section 8, something where other people are paying $2,000 a month. You know, she got three kids, so it's a big place. And then, um, you know, so her portion is, I don't know, let's just say 800 well, you know, she might be looking for him to pay half of that. Well, versus 2000 even if he did pay half, which he refused to do, he would only be paying $400, you know. And so I'm like, wow, this is kind of amazing. But this is what they do. So we're going to talk about, <coughs> excuse me, wait, I need some water. I have on the oldest Raider shirt in the world. I think I bought this thing in like 92 or something. Look at this. What's supposed to be black is now a reminiscent gray. It's just really old, but I really love it. So I haven't gone, gone away, thrown it away. Um, what was I getting ready to do? Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's start with um, the uh, slideshow. This is the definition. Hey, Deb. So I had a <coughs> quick question. A and I needed your uh, I just take said. on what's going down. Well, he, you know, they, so according to I have a home women girl. that I talked to, he could also go down in bed. And she's talking to a dude and he's 33. Plus, he was very smart. Um, he I has mean, one you know, child. You take him he has a dude was little boy. Intelligent as hell. He read all and the time. a home girl. So he wasn't she has your two children already. He just lived a nigga so they've been talking for a while. To his anyway, so she he hit me was, up one day and you know, she was like crying a user. He was uh, about a you know, situation that's going he just on liked with the boyfriend. What he could get out of now, I really can't and, give her my um, take because I I can you know, see. But me, no, well, anyway, uh, I'll get two back different angles on it. Okay, right? I can see his side. So this is what a homosexual is for those of you who are so here's what's going on. Term, it's a man who gets into relationship with the sole goal of having a roof over his head. And he wants his baby place mama, they share custody that ain't, ain't his of mama's their son. house. That and ain't so his every buddy's, now and then, you know, he gets visitation with his son. house or sleeping um, in his car. The baby mama motel, told my homegirl, boyfriend, you know, low income that place like that. Their he son live in a nice place that's doesn't clean. feel like he's loved, <coughs> that he's getting enough time with Where his somebody's father. Where somebody's cooking and, you know, and so he got I asked services. Her, like, when so, he does um, get his son, you're hearing double. Do they spend quality time together? You know, you are? she said yes. That know what's they do things as a family. All right, her words, Ooh, not mine. That's kind of bizarre. Um, uh, the mother told him that um to that she would like for them to spend okay. a long Please time together, right quick. where it's not you know. Um, her, my homegirl's children, and her. Well, I'm okay? glad you so guys told me. My homegirl was feeling a, a certain type of way about it. She didn't like that. So I don't hear anything. Um, which, in, you know, I can understand that. But anyway, so the baby mama also told I don't know. My homegirl's boyfriend oh, the that audio she was from the slide feeling kind of upset. Because she really wanted the relationship with them to work. And that she still wanted to be with him. So my homegirl is feeling a certain type of way. Because she oh, feels she that know what the hell her man, her there. boyfriend, is going to leave her someday to go back with his baby mama. Um, I, really, I really don't know what to tell her. I don't know what she expects. That's why I, um, that's why I, I'm... I'm here sending you this video 
because I really uh, need your take on um, what I can uh, tell her and what I can advise her. What do you think? Uh, Is that better? I don't know where that's coming from. Seriously. I'm I'm looking, I'm trying to figure it out. Hold on. I'm di- I'm doing uh I'm trying to get this right here. Okay. A video is playing in the background. Okay, you know what? It's gone now. What the hell was that? Uh I don't, I don't know. I have no idea how that happened. Oh, the software has just been really giving me the blues lately. Okay, I'm glad. I don't know. I, 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 I. Okay, well, anyway, let's go back to this. So, we have uh, the definition of a homosexual, as I said. Um, somebody who comes into a relationship just because they want to have some place to stay. I hope it doesn't come back when I change to the next slide. This is kind of tripping me out because I'm I don't know what happened. Okay. Well, anyway, let's let's see. It's a mystery. Now these are the traits. I finished made ten traits of what I you know ten traits of a homosexual. So how you can see it? Yes, because I want you to be able to see the slide. I don't know what's happening with that video. So then, you know, I tried to make, I had a little funny as I was making this. Um, according to Erica Badu, a homosexual is usually named Tyrone. And you got to always pay their way and their cousin's way too. <laughs> Remember that song? And I thought about that. I was like, oh, she telling them they better come, you better come and help, call Tyrone to help him come and get his shit. Uh. My picture's smaller because you're supposed to be seeing the slides uh, up there. So you read the slide and then I'm just there. So that's according to Erica Badu. <laughs> ah. Okay, trait number two. They come over to visit. And somehow they just never leave. Now, these are the guys that they come and they say, well, you know, I'm going to come and stay with you for a day or two, a weekend, a week, whatever. And then somehow the niggas, because he keep adding more and more stuff to it. And then, you know, you lonely, you happy that somebody's there. You got company. You're getting some D, you know, somebody to talk to and laugh to and somebody in the house at night when except for the kids. So, you know, a lot of the women, get ha- they're happy. They don't really want him to leave. And so then by the time he does, they're like, well, you know, it's, it's too much. You know, you should go home. You know, we got, it's just too many people here. You know, people are going to talk, whatever. You know, we just mad. It's too much, too fast. So you send them away and then you miss them. So then you want them to come right back. That's what they count on. That's what they count on. So um, this, that's just one way they kind of do it. They don't really necessarily ask you. If they can move in, it just kind of happens. And you just, you know, before you know it, he got some stuff and he's moved in a toothbrush. And then now he got, you know, some shirts over there. And, you know, then it becomes a conversation where sometimes they hit you with this. Well, you know, we spend so much time together. Why should we pay two rents? Or, you know, I spent so much time over here, you know, I may as well move in because, you know, I'm just staying with my mama or whatever. You know, I, I, I we, we could just be together. We could be together like this. I could, then you could see me every day. So they put it like it's going to be a uh, like a benefit to you for them to be living at your house free, eating up all your food, running up your cable bill, running up your water bill and just generally just being a pain in your ass. But I'm telling you, a lot of women fall for it. 
Okay, then the, the third trait, you know, because I was thinking about these all day today. Um, they are romantic. They tend to be very charming guys, right? They have, you know, like I talked about my friend, they get the gift of gab. You know, they keep you laughing. They're very entertaining. You want to be around them, right? They're very, they're, you want to spend time with them because they, when you leave, you're smiling, you're happy. You know, you have a good time with these guys. And that's what they count on as well because they have to create something in your life to make you miss, miss it when they're not there, right? Otherwise, what would be the point of having them uh, live with you? See, they, it's like a setup. It's a program they run. And it's always the same. So then, you know, they hit you with this, you know, I love, you know, I, I think I fell in love with you the first moment I laid eyes on you. You know, I just can't believe my feelings. You know, it's kind of scaring me. I just never felt like this so fast about somebody. Oh, my God, the song comes out and, you know, this they start hitting you with all this stuff. Exactly. Exactly. They would let me borrow your car kind. Yeah, well, that's what um, a lot of the do them do. <laughs> Eat your kids' snacks. Yeah, they do that too. They do that. Oh, my goodness. She married him. She was really tripping. All right, because she fell, she fell prey to number three. But, I'm mean, you know, well, anyway, let me go to the next slide. They don't own shit. Okay, they don't own anything. Everything that they have can be brought to your house in either the back seat of a car, a trunk, or in some he couple of hefty bags. You know, the big garbage can, you know, the big garbage can, can liners. That's what they use for for luggage if they don't really have any suitcase. Because most of them don't. They just go from pillar to post, throwing their shit into hefty bags, tossing it over their shoulder like a hobo, and then, you know, coming from one mom's house to another. So, you know, they usually have a lot of clothes, right? Because the clothes is what they use to go from place to place, place to place to find women to victimize. So they have to have, you know, they got they, they jewelry. They got their jewelry working, jewelry. And, you know, the rings and necklaces. They got their ears pierced and stuff. They always be well-groomed because, you know, you ain't paying no rent. You can spend all that money getting your hair tightened up every week. And, you know, they all be fr the clothes be fresh. And, you know, shoes be fresh. Everything is all fitted. They look good. You know, they, they some of them have a car. Most of them don't. But they look good. And then here they come, you know. So the woman, you, all you guys, you don't really notice. Okay, he's talking about he's moving in. And he can move in with some shit in some trash bags. What are you doing? What kind of man is that? Why are you letting him come into your house? You can't possibly know that much about him. Or you are that desperate you let this clown that you just met be up all in your house? Exactly. Jewelry. That's how they spell it. And I'm just like, what the hell is this? I don't know. They did nothing. And even, you know, like I said, even if they do have a car, they're making a note. And a lot of times they only have the car because... It's someplace, alternate place for them to sleep if they can't get no homosexual hookup. Okay, this one is what they find an excuse not to chip in on the rent or the other household bills. The excuses that I always hear from them, why should I do that? Because, you know, she was already paying for everything before I got here anyway, so she could just keep paying for everything. That's what they say. Now, I doubt they say that to the woman's face, but when I ask them about it, that's what they tell me is their reason for not paying. And what they do is, you know, so soon as she starts, you know, asking for money or whatever, you know, they, they have her hooked, right? So she's emotionally hooked on him and his physical presence. You know, she has an emotional dependence at this point. So they use that against you. So if you start getting in his ass about not paying any money, then suddenly he's going to be like, well, fuck it then. You know, I'll just leave. And so you all like worried and, you know, well, like you're going to be alone again and all this stuff. And then he hits you with that. Well, you know, why is it a big deal? You was already paying everything before I came anyway. I just came here to be with you because you wanted me here so you know it, it becomes a conundrum for you ladies and you know you just have to make a decision I mean I'm not saying you know some women have like they balling and they got money 
And, you know, they don't mind having a homo, homosexual living up in their house. It wouldn't be my cup of tea. But, I mean, some women just don't mind. They'd rather, you know, I mean, they have plenty of money. They feel like they can't take it with them. So, I mean, they want to, you know, spend it on a dude, buying him clothes and letting him live in their house for free so they can have companionship and sex and stuff. That's, you know, whatever. That's what they want to do. It's not my place to tell them. Yep, no job, eat your kid's snack, <laughs> and have a whole baby outside your relationship. Well, I mean, they do because they like, you got to line up the next place for them to stay when you get sick of his shit. And tell him to call Tyrone. He got to have, he got to be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, babe, uh, yeah, you know, uh, this bitch over here, she tripping. She just threw me out. Can I come stay with you? Or I'm coming over there. They don't even ask. They just tell you they're coming. So this is something that I think, you know, a lot of young women especially don't really understand what they're getting themselves set up for. Your loneliness and your, you know, the desperation that they see in your eyes. Because if you see women who are just desperately lonely, um, please don't come in here talking about other channels, Tilly. That's a violation. And whatever she did on some other channel, they don't have shit to do with over here. So do not do that again or you'll be booted out. That's the We don't do that here. I don't know why people always do that. You come in somebody's chat, just come in somebody's house, and you start talking about some other bitch. What the fuck is that? Stop doing that. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you should. Get a dog. Get a cat. Do something. But it's like... um. I will tell you what it is um, on the next one. Is it the next one? I don't remember. Oh, okay. This I kind of skipped ahead. Um, so, you know, you get mad, right? You get fed up. You notice your groceries bill coming up, as somebody pointed out in the, in the chat. Oh, they're you know, eating up your kids' snacks, and you got your kids crying and stuff. <clears throat> And um, it's one of those things that happens. So, you know, you're going to get fed up. You're going to start seeing the strain. I mean, I get letters from women in my advice column all the time. It's like, you know, he's here and, you know, but he doesn't pay any bills and I'm on a tight budget. And, you know, he doesn't want to give me any money. And I'm like, shit, you don't give me no money. You don't eat. So, I mean, you know, that would have to be the agreement, though, when he moves in. Because what happens, you know, they let the man move in. And then you... Um, you know, you think it's going to be all cool and everything. And then you notice how much more money you spend it every month feeding this nigga and, and running, you know, he's keep the TV on all day. So the light bill's higher. He running the heat because he ain't at work. So you can't turn, turn the heat off in the daytime like you used to and stuff like that. So he's making all your expenses higher. More toilet paper being used, more soap being used, more water being used, more dishes being washed. Everything, all their costs, incidental costs are going to increase when you have another adult in the house. It's just, I mean, that's just how it is so when they don't give you any money then you're gonna be um who been attacking you oh my god well if somebody comes in here attacking you bad wish just block them block them block them block them i don't even need to know it just you have carte blanche on that because that's you know it's not the place for that coming here and asking about some other channel and all that old bullshit rude ass people uh yeah it's just another it's another channel i mean it's another you know like having another kid i call these kind of guys tall children because you know they got a deep voice and hair on their face and everything but they act like kids and they want you to treat them like children you know working and cleaning up after them and all this old stuff so, but this is how they get you, you know, until you are attached. And then, you know, when he threatens to leave, then you fall to pieces. You know, no, no, you know, it's okay. You know, I'll make it work somehow. You know, and you start figuring out what you, you can cut how many lunches you can skip and all this kind of stuff to try to make up the difference in expense instead of tossing that motherfucker out on his ass. Now, this is the part that I think people don't they understand. Um, just block her. They pick you carefully. They pick you carefully. Um, they don't just come up to anybody. They're going to be looking for women who have a certain presentation. And let me say, tell you what that is. First of all, you have, they have like, because you can see them when you go into uh, their um, 
you can see their faces. Like if you go into nightclubs and stuff, you know, where there's a large number of women, large group. Um, oh, I see. Well, they should know better than that. Mm. Um, <laughs> I'm just, see, now I'm getting mad. I'm sorry, Bedwitch. I, you know, try to keep a, a clean uh, atmosphere here. Uh, you know, can't control who comes to the channel. But, um, you know, definitely there are rules to participate in here. And if you violate them, then you get booted out. So, thanks, Vanessa. Um, and that's just how it is. Okay, so these guys, they're looking. Okay, so you're in the crowd, right? You can look at the women's faces and see who's looking thirsty, hungry, unfed, desperate, lonely. It shows in their eyes. And like any guy who they think is paying attention to them, they like, you know, hone in on him with this look like, you know, he's like a tasty morsel or something. It's really bizarre. So next time you go in a, in a crowd of folks like that in that kind of environment, watch the women's face and you'll see what I mean. Guys look for that that expression. They look for that kind of that, that eye contact, that look in a woman's eyes of desperation and neediness. They look for that. Low self confidence low self-esteem so then here they come and they roll up on them and they play what i call the fairy godfather game whatever they kind of ferret out whatever it is that you say that you want what you're looking for whatever and then they're going to magically become that thing at least they're going to tell you they are doesn't mean that it's true you have no proof you just met the fool but they're going to present themselves as being the answer to that dream that you have the answer to that prayer that you just laid out there what you you know been claiming you've been looking for waiting for jesus or god or somebody to bring to you all the stuff he's gonna magically be that like oh you know he's now he's your dreams have come true so he they these guys pick their victims very carefully they tend to go a lot for single mothers and they go for older women who they think have some money so you see these older ladies you know they had like husbands or died or whatever they working they got their pension they got their husband's pension they own the house they got you know they got some shit going on they have some money and um these dudes, you know, she's wearing all her diamonds and whatnot. She got all her gold working. You know, she's driving a beautiful, you know, $80,000 car. You know, she owns her home, own home in a nice part of the upper, in the hills, where it's, you know, upper middle class people. So he's like, ding, 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 ding. And then, you know, he goes in for her because he knows in spite of her having all of those things, unless she has a relationship, she's most likely, you know, hit some lonely moments. And uh, so he's going to become the answer to all her prayers, right? That's what they do. It's just kind of, it's kind of amazing. Yeah. I just, I sleep at, the, I go to his house. I, was, I don't even, like that, I told y'all about the dude I let spend the night and he's still talking about it. It's like, are you going to let me, to like, hell no. That was a once in a lifetime experience, my brother. You had it and now it's over. You will not be doing that again. I don't like people spending the night at my house. I don't like, I like to, I like to sleep diagonal in my bed. And I can't do that when somebody is in there. You need to sleep on the floor then if you want to spend the night. <laughs> but, you know, watch for that, ladies. You know, look for, look for that look in other women. And then you'll be able to recognize what I'm talking about. Normally, these guys do not move. They don't need to give notice at their apartment and, you know, hire a mover and do all this kind of stuff. No. Remember, they don't have no furniture. Everything is in a hefty bag. But what they normally do, you would find out where their, what their living situation is. Either they just got out of prison or they stand with, quote, stand with their sister or mama or grandmama or some auntie or something or... They, you know, in some kind of transitional housing, a halfway house between prison and, and real life or, you know, drug drug addiction in real life. Some kind of situation where it's like a group home for adult men. They're going to be in that or they some kind of low low income tenement type rental housing hotel thing where they have a hot plate and shit to cook in. Um, that's what you're going to find. You know, most, like I said, most of them are not coming from their own spot. 
because they're not they're not too anxious to give up their own spot because it has like privacy they can do what they want to do they can have their friends or they can make as much noise as they want to they can deal with other women there comfortably i mean when a guy has his own spot and he cherishes it he wants to maintain it you know until he's ready to you know be serious and get married or something that's not going to happen in a situation where a guy just met you two weeks ago that's not what his emotional state is he's looking for he's looking to escape the situation he's in to have peace and quiet and some meals cooked by somebody he can rub on and sleep with and all this sort of stuff. It's an it's a upgrade from his current situation. So coming to you is better than staying where he is. Yeah, I don't know. These people be having bed bugs and shit. I'm telling you, I'm just so, I'm just like really particular. I can't do it. Yeah, they have a hot plate. They be cooking on a hot plate. And then number nine. That's his one skill. Like I said, like my dude, the friend I had, now he was working two jobs. I mean, he was an exception. I mean, his jobs weren't, you know, particularly glamorous or anything, but he did have two of them. And he was making good money, and when he retires, he's going to have like a double pension because he worked two full-time jobs. One was with AT&T, and I forgot what the other one was. But anyway, he, you know, he was he was making some money. And he wasn't really home that much. You know, he was staying with these women. So um, I'm sure, you know, that's why he felt like he just shouldn't be paying rent because he wasn't really there that much. And then, um, so, you know, in the bedroom, they always be putting it, putting it down. And women, you know, having women hitting all these high notes and stuff, and they just get dizzy. They get delirious. They can't see. They don't know. They can't think. It's like, you know, they just lose track of all kinds of rhyme and reason and good sense because they are focused so much on... Um, you know, what this man is given to him, which is the high, hard one. So it becomes really interesting, you know, again, though, they're looking for women who have a certain kind of mindset because not every woman can be, you know, can be manipulated that easily by some D. It's like, okay, that was good. What else you got? But, you know, a lot of women aren't like that. They get stuck right there, and that's as far as they go. Okay, and then the last one of my list of ten, they usually come with baggage. They come with baggage. They have, um, you know, like exes. They got a bunch of exes. They got a bunch of baby mamas. They got kids all over the damn place. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just too much. Even though, even they're not taking care of the kids that they already got. And it's like every time they stay at some a new bronze house, then she he end up with another kid. And a lot of these women, you know, they'd be like, "Oh, I was with him for two months, and I, you know, then I was pregnant." I'm like, "How are you pregnant by somebody you just barely even know?" I don't understand that mentality, but I think they get so caught up in these kind of emotional situations that they think, uh, you know, that it's going to be something lasting and permanent because they, you know, play in house, and then they, you know, start. They get rid of their birth control. They get rid of a protection, safe sex, all the stuff. They don't do any of that. And then next thing you know, she's pregnant. She comes baby mama number three, four, five, whatever. And he, then he's on to the next woman. So those are my ideas for uh, the traits of a homosexual that you should be looking for. And uh, to, to know what's coming down the pike. They're going to be hitting you up hard. Talking about, you know, we, uh, you know, I, we, you know, I, I could just stay over here with you. Just think how much, you know, we, we could spend more time together. We could, we could be together all the time. You know, it save us gas. It save us money. You know, that money that we spend for two rents, we could put that in the bank. We just, I mean, it sounds good. It sounds really good. They run a great game, but they don't, they back no shit up. It's not like they're going to be coming in picking over paying the bills. They just want, to, you know, somebody to set up and use. While they um, save their money. That's what's happening. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, what happened with Rusty? Oh, <laughs> I missed it, but I guess I'll see it on the on the uh, on the chat replay. So you know, I mean, talking about these homosexuals isn't that big of a deal. It's nothing I need to talk about for hours on end. But. Um, this is something I think a lot of women just 
that's need to be aware of. This is a common game. This game is run so much, it's ridiculous. As I kind of grouped, lumped them together, the homosexual with cuffing season, but really they're two separate things because you could run into a homosexual anytime. They don't, they, I mean, they whatever's going to get them, help them get over, get some, they want to come up on some meals, they want to come up on some. Uh, you know, it's a place to sleep where they don't have to pay for it. I mean, all to come up on some free booty under the guise of, you know, you being my girlfriend and we, quote, living together. I mean, it's all about what they're going to get for you. They're complete opportunists and narcissists. And unfortunately, so many um, women fall for it. You just fall for it. And I want you guys to stop. Please stop. <laughs> don't do that. You know, first of all, what I mean, if you're going to live with a dude, shouldn't it be something where he's bringing something to your life? He's making your life better. He's making things for you easier. How is that happening when, um, you know, you're giving everything, you're sacrificing, and he's just taking? I mean, really think about that. You guys, you know, I always talk to you about your self-esteem and setting up boundaries, and this is another example of it. If some adult is going to be moving into your home, even if it's a roommate situation, you know, I mean, they need to be doing something. I mean, if they don't have any money, well, maybe they could clean up all the, you know, clean the house up and pick your kids up from school or something so you don't have to pay after, after school daycare costs or something. I mean, they're going to make a contribution that brings some value to them being there. That's what I mean. There's should be some value and you know dick ain't it because you can get that's practically blown up and down the street just free just grab one like a leaf you know if that's what you want um there's no reason to live with it and pit take care of it like that and sacrificing your money cuffing season a new term honey now nah, that's old but you know we we have to um they, it's in full effect. Well, yeah, doesn't it snow and stuff down there in Atlanta? Shit, you know, it's getting ready to get cold. As they say, it's sitting to get cold. So, you know, niggas got to get indoors. They need some heat. You know, the summertime where you can just sleep in your car with the windows down is over. So, you got, you know, it's time. Because um, ain't nobody trying to live in no roach infested, dirty, stock smelling fungus pit. <laughs> These dudes be living in. Mm mm. No, 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 don't do that. Yeah, that's so that's um, that's homosexual, and that's my discussion on cuffing season. So that's all I got. This is not gonna be a long session. We're gonna be back on Tuesday, though. You know, we is I need to I, this time I'm gonna have some some Hennessy or something because um. Man, and remember, we changed the name of it from Tell It Tuesday to What the Fuck Tuesday because this, the last couple of weeks we've had, the letters have just been just off the chain. Just people, something's just, I, I had a headache. I got a headache midway through the show last Tuesday, and uh, it took me a few hours to get rid of it, but it was like a tension headache because it's warm it's warm and they you know they can do that can't do that it's snowing and ice and shit on the ground these need some heat they need heat yeah you can't well this was gonna be just this was just a short you know a short little pop like a pop-up show i talked about homosexuals and um the cuffing season that's coming up but uh you know this is not a kind of thing you have to go into too much detail but I'll be back on Tuesday with the with the advice letters and Thursday with another tough topic Thursday. Um, I don't know what the topic will be this time, but yeah, them letters was just off the chain. I have some in my mail inbox. I kind of scared to even look at them. I'm just like, I, I don't want to get a headache, you know, days in advance. So I'm just leaving them there. I'm let my, I think I'll let my cousin do do the letters this time. Because all she's, you know, she goes and she cut, takes them and she copies them and pastes them into a Word document and then prints it out. And then I sit here on the air and I, you know, I read them. But um, I sometimes, I, you know, sometimes I have to do it myself. But I think just after the last couple of weeks, I'm not going to touch it. I'm not doing nothing until I get on the air. That's what we're going to do. So um, 
that's uh you know pretty much what i got to say folks you know i said you go on and enjoy the rest of your sunday as will i i'm about to go over here and hit up netflix and rest on my couch like leos are so prone to do but thanks for sitting in with me for this short show and uh, i will be back on tuesday and we will do it all over again all right thanks you guys hey thanks bad witch and other moderators i appreciate you bye bye